everything turned on again. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of 10 Forward Weekly. Um, this time brought to you live on the wonderful world of YouTube because uh, the internet is uh, crapping on me from above. Uh, so I am your host, uh, Mike Fatum, also known as Ambassador Kel. I'm also your community manager. Uh, and joining me this week is uh, senior environment artist Nick DeGood and lead environment artist Scott Boyd. Say hi, everybody. Hey, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> the best part about that was Nick not hitting his push to talk button, so he just mouthed hi everybody. <laughs> hey. Hey. Sorry. It's hi, all right. <laughs> uh okay, so um this week we are talking about uh what we have dubbed the year of Klingon, the um updates to uh, Klingon content uh, across the board. Well, especially early Klingon content, the stuff that we thought was a really, really good story, um, but uh, was not up to the standards of the work we're doing now on the game. And so we're going through, because this year is kind of Klingon-focused storylines, um, and doing an update to that content so that when you start a new Klingon character, you'll feel, uh, you'll, you'll get a little bit more of a sense of what the game is actually like. Scott, do you want to talk a little bit about the thought process behind this overhaul? Sure. Um, like you said, you know, we're, our, our standards for our art are way higher than they, they were. I mean, 10 years ago, it was 10 years ago. It was things have changed. And so we have computers that can do crazy stuff. So our fidelity has gone up. And uh, we've also changed our mindset when it came to just allowing our artists time to do stuff. And uh, so we, uh, Al's decision was we want to go back in and we want to revamp our Klingon uh, tutorial. That took design because there weren't a lot of people playing. It. it was very complicated, and there was a lot of, um, I guess, there were just some bad decisions when it came to how the flow of the map was. It's old. Yeah, right. it's, it's not even that it's bad. It's just that that was how things were done back in the day, and we kind of know better now. Right. So we're streamlining it, and then in the in the process, you know, I'm always like, well, then let's revisit some of the art. Yeah. Um, and then so Nick was in charge of working on some of our, our assets, and he was working on a kit. So we were utilizing some of that uh, for our interiors, for our ships. But so when you start the tutorial, you are starting in a ship interior. And so David, one of our environment artists, he was going to work on the, the bridge itself. And then Nick was going to work on the kit, which is going to do double duty. It's going to be, you're going to see it throughout the entire uh, story arc of the Klingons. It's going to go through, like, like when you play the old missions, you'll see a lot of the same uh, Klingon interiors, but we've our lighting changes and story beats. We change that stuff up. So Nick was uh, given the task of making the new version of that. And the beautiful thing about what Nick did was he did build that in a way that it allowed for um, future creation, where we're not like, hey, we're here's your hallway and it's going to look like that till the end of time. It's Here's a piece that has a lot of moving parts to it that you can, oh, I want to add this, or I want to create a new version that can be added later. And it adds for a lot of modularity, which you'll see as we look through some of the stuff. Um, and so when we kind of have more time to add more pieces to it, uh, you'll see it um, as it progresses. And I just can't wait to kind of get our hands dirty with uh, being able to create some of that. And again, Nick did such a fantastic job with... Um, you know, he just had a big. Uh, he had to lift a lot of stuff for that. But again, it was it's physically gonna, actually. Nick yeah. has actually been lifting computers all day just to get this, yes. uh, this stuff yeah. going. Yeah. So <laughs> it, it, so <laughs> that just doing a, is going to do a lot of heavy lifting. But because of the way he did it, he made it really easy for us to kind of uh, do what we want to do with that. So, um, and I'm sure Nick will kind of go more into that. Yeah. As we uh, as we go, but so Nick, when Scott says a kit, what does that mean? What is what is a kit, and how do environment artists use it? So, um, so initially, what I was tasked with making had nothing to do with uh, a kit or uh, future uh, Klingon stuff necessarily. Um, I was tasked to rebuild Kittimer, uh, the Kittimer ground map that we use for uh, the Romulan. Um, decision point i don't know what do we call that when you choose a side uh, yeah, whether you're the aligned the alliance yeah. like where you, where you align as a romulus screen share so you guys can see what i'm yeah what I'm so doing. we have this old map um it's a cool map but it's old and i was tasked with updating it so i i had been working on updating it already 
and we knew that we needed a kit. And a kit is basically like a set of modular pieces that we can build maps out of. So they're like Legos, but rather than individual bricks, we're talking about like you build, you know, you build one little square town or, uh, you know, block of a town and connect it up to my block of a town. And now we have two, but I can take mine off and put it somewhere else and use it over again or whatever. So, and with all of that, with, with multiples of those, we can make a whole city. So we're making a whole city or a whole map out of these, you know, smaller chunks. Um, you know, think of them like hallways. Generally, hallways are, are one of the kit pieces that we have. So, and so sometimes you can end up using those in a multiple different places. So, like, I know um, uh, some of that stuff was being used in the new bridge for the Klingon tutorial, but it also might be used, you know, like you said, for Kittimer. So, like, it's it's more about creating an architectural style for the Klingons, right, that people will then use. Well, that was, I mean, that was what I was doing with Kittimer was kind of re- uh, well, there were a couple of goals with Kittimer. One was just rebuilding the map, period, because it was old and we wanted to um, to make it better. Yeah. And also, in that, we wanted to really drive... Uh, coming out of Discovery with all the Klingon stuff that had been there, and we knew that we wanted to get more into um, the Klingons and re eventually redo Klingon stuff uh, in other parts of the game, too. We wanted to set uh, a, a style for what Klingon... Not not just not specifically ships, but just what is a Klingon architecture style in 2410. Um, and we've seen Klingon interiors throughout all of the various series, but they're very disparate and different um, from one episode or or series or movie to the next. And so we really wanted to set just a style in general that we can use. Um, and because I was working on Kittimer, I I generated this the style or or I was rebuilding the map. Um, and initially we thought that we were just going to, you know, basically spruce up the existing assets, but they're so bad. <laughs> the, 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 part, the parts, it's not, and I'm not blaming any previous artists for this. I mean, we were under crazy time pressures and we worked in a very different way, but there are just things about the old pieces that meant that, that updating them in place was not really viable. So I started off with basically just white boxing uh, an entirely new map, except that it follows the exact same shapes as the old map. So then we ended up with this kind of white box kit of, or, you know, white box map um, that was, is the same shape and layout as the old map, but is now going to be entirely new assets. So when we started making new assets, then it's all about like, okay, now we can push it. And so, um, you know, we just started trying to figure out what that style is. I have always felt um, I, I like the Klingons, but I am more interested in maybe just being a nerd um, in the behind the scenes Klingons that we never see. That I know that, you know, yeah, they're a warrior race and all that, but they're clearly people making starship. Right. Uh, oh, Nick, did we lose you? Scott, did I lose you? Uh, oh, there you go. Okay, the Rels. Last, sorry, Nick. The last thing you said was clearly making starships, and then we had a little bit of a blank out there. Making starships, and they're doing science and whatever. Um, we know that there's more to Klingon culture than what we usually see, but what we usually see is just fighting and ships, right? right? So we wanted to kind of explore more of what does the higher end of uh, you know Klingon society look like? What does architecture, high architecture of Klingon look like? We've seen, um, you know, some fancier places. Laurel's chamber in uh, Discovery, for instance, that was really kind of nice and fancy. Um, and yeah. so we wanted to elicit more of that. And so Kittimer being this big conference center that is Klingon, um, we wanted to bring it more into something fancier and nicer and, um, you know, clean materials and, and not everything being greasy and, you know, some decent lighting and but we still need to make it Klingon. It still has to feel Klingon. So we we and so here you can start you know, to see kind of merged all of that together to try and come up with a style that that felt Klingon but still felt more elevated. And so we're going through a, a slideshow now of the old versions of the of Kinemer and the new versions. I'm just going to kind of let this play out. Um, but you can talk. Can you talk a little bit about the updates you did? It looks like there was some major reshaping of the environment. Did you rebuild this from the ground up, or was it a lot of like yeah. texturing? 
Um, no, this is so. This is basically all brand new assets, but built to match roughly the footprint and the locations of all the existing assets. So, like you could see where that big truss up on the the left side and the the giant pillar in the center. Yeah, you know that's the same shapes in the same places, right? Watch where that truss goes. But it's now a new, completely new asset um, that follows that same shape and kind of and that we can refine and make into. Um, a nicer part that will have more, you know, uh, detail and uh, subtlety to it. Yeah. Um, this we completely redid. This is the center of Kittimer, and we had this giant block thing in the center, and we had done some concepts on how to, to dress that up, and eventually we, we just deleted it, and it felt so much better in here to just have that gone. Wide open. It's like yeah. one of those uh, HGTV shows. You can make an open concept space. <laughs> And that, that's what kind of our, our designer or our concept artist was really kind of pushing for that. He got the idea of airports, airports, that that kind of big open space. It just feels better um, in there. Yeah. One of the things too, Nick, I, I, we brought up too, was the idea that there's so many, you know, they have the Klingon symbol. We had it everywhere. Yeah. And it was like, let's, you know, when you walk around a place, you don't see like American flags just Flying everywhere. Thomas Maroney and, I, and I have had this have this discussion a number of times where, you know, we see throughout Star Trek or various other series where somebody will have their logo just pasted around with, you know, American flags on every wall, floor, ceiling, your mm -hmm. clothes. You know, we we didn't want to do that. We wanted to have the the symbols in very specific places or have banners which can have that right if you have flags yeah. around them that's fine and i noticed uh, a united federation of planets banner in a previous uh screenshot so mm -hmm. it's uh it's because kittimer was kind of at least it, it in that romulan mission i think but also you know as the story is progressing and the kittimer alliance is becoming a thing more and more uh becoming more of a multi-faction place to be yeah so i mean this is uh you know, this is when you're a Romulan, you come through there. There is a, a, a delegate area for the Federation and for the Romulans on, on yeah. both sides. Um, and yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right. So um, uh, in developing Kittimer, then you develop this kit that's being used on everything else. Um, yeah. How do, how do you design the pieces so that they're sort of universally applicable to other Klingon maps? Uh, I don't know. That they, well, okay, so we universally is a strong word, but you know what I yeah. mean. <laughs> we, we couldn't go back and just shove them into old maps and have them feel right. They would feel out of place. Um, but in terms of making new maps, we make sure that we make, uh, you know, all of the pieces that you need, right? We make a, we make, make a wall or a number of walls, and then we make a wall with a door in it, and we make a wall with a, a corner so that you can make a corner of a room or a hallway or something. And so when you put all of those parts together, you can make interesting spaces uh, that you then decorate you know, further. That's really um, cool. And, and in terms of the modularity of them, what Scott was talking about is previously we would make a kit where we might make a straight section of hallway as one entire object, and then we make a you know ninety degree corner of a of a hallway as another object, and with this kit I broke it down a lot more than that. So I basically just made, a, I forget six or five or six different wall types, mm -hmm. um, and then within each of those walls there are a bunch of panels, and we made different um, different sets of modules for how those panels are arranged or what is inside of those panels or what's exposed, what's not exposed. And through applying those panels and different types of walls in different places, um, you can get a lot of variety through it so that you don't just feel like you're walking down the same hallway every, you know, yeah. time after time. That, I mean, that works for the Federation, right? The Federation is very organized and everything is very uh, uh, uniform. Uniform is a very good word. Yeah. Um, and the Klingons aren't really that way. We've, like I said, we've seen a lot of variety in the types of interiors that they've had in the past. Um, I mean, very, very different things from one movie to another show. Uh, and we don't necessarily want things that don't jive with each other, but we do want that kind of variety to make it feel like it's, you know, not a submarine, but that there's, there's, you know, 
differences in one area or another area of a, of a map so they don't feel like you're just going down the same uh, uniform hallway over and over again. Right. And we'll also, you'll also be able to see that when you look at some of the, uh, the ship interior stuff that we I have. was going to say, we're not even looking at the kit, so it's hard to, hard to judge that uh, by it. Um, this, I will say that the Kitimer um, is made out of a kit. It's just a larger kit, and it's not meant to be turned into hallways and things, right? It's right. just a, um, you know, that big pillar on the on the left-hand side is all one big piece, right? The big yeah. um, arching uh, supports are one part. So they, they're still modular and we still array the same parts around. Um, so it's still a kit. It's just not meant to be, uh, you know, a ship interior kind of kit. Yeah. Now, and this might be an optical illusion as I'm looking at these images change, at least the front entryway, um, looks a little bit, uh, almost scaled down like we did with deep space nine. Did we, did we, um, make the map a little less tall or is that just my eyes playing? Track? Um, so no, we didn't, we didn't do anything. Um, to scale it down, but you can see, like, I put in this big drop there on that. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can go backwards, but... Oh, no, I uh, can't. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, we did a lot with lighting, too, to make sure that the lighting, all the lit areas were basically at ground level. Um, for instance, those triangular lights, you know, we could have them up at the very top of the ceiling, but then they're illuminating everything up there, and we drop them down, it compresses the space, it compresses the eye, it makes it feel more like you're in a hallway, you, you know, a, mm -hmm. an actual reasonable sized person hallway rather than, uh, <laughs> rather than a this giant <laughs> gargantuan yeah. gallery of honor or whatever it's called. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Very cool. Um, so are you aware of too, like the, uh, like the railings and we tried to bring down the, 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 the kind of micro detail stuff, like the lights on the walls, like they're smaller, they're thinner. To, to give it a sense of so the things don't just feel like these big giant large structures like all the lights that you're saying if, they're, if you look at the old ones it's this big grid of light where we're like you know we're going to confine everything to these smaller uh, beams of light to kind of and then like all the grid work on the walls we brought that to a smaller more repetitive there's more repeats in the in the grid lines but they're still they feel like they're not so gigantic because even all that all that that micro details of if you scale it up, it just makes everything feel larger. So you kind of bring that down and it kind of gives it a more of a realistic scale to the, the world. This is a pretty common problem in, in interior design too. People will look at, you know, a living room, a blank living room, and they will try to put all of these little pieces of furniture. If you have a big room, the temptation is just to take standard size pieces of furniture or whatever and array them around. Right. Um, and you'll end up with this very noisy mess of things. And what you really want to do is pick a couple of large, chunky pieces that you put in very specific places, and then you kind of detail with smaller things around them. And that feels much more normal or real or something. Um, and so we do that a lot with, with detailing here, where we, we put the details, you know, the smaller details kind of along the edges or around some bigger, larger thing um, to try and you know, anchor the space and to divide the space up and to put into, uh, you know, different areas. So and you'll see it. Sorry, you'll see it once we, when you guys can actually get your hands on it. The detail that Nick put into the railings, it's so good. I just love, that's what, you know, you, even like little rivets and stuff. That kind of helps ground. These it. railings, I will also say that we did a pretty deep dive. Donnie did a, a really good job of collecting a bunch of uh, screenshots and stuff from uh, various shows and episodes. Those railings are taken almost exactly out of uh, somewhere that I can't even remember now. <laughs> out of somewhere, um, Star Trek. Yeah, yeah, no, out of out of canon. I mean, yeah. they're not they're not exactly the same, but they're they're referencing heavily from. But they do uh, look very Klingon. They're gorgeous. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Our old the old version of the map is great, but it does look very much like this is an MMO with a Klingon skin rather than what we've made, what you guys have made now looks very much like this is a space where Klingons would actually live. Um, to ask the question that I know chat would be asking if they were here, um, all of that detail work you were talking about where the space stays the same size, but you change how the walls and ceiling and things look to make things smaller. Um, is that something we could, and I'm not saying we're going to do this, but is that something we could, you could apply to, um, say one of the you know federation interior hallways of a spaceship or something like that to make it it's, less it's, feel less like it's a towering cathedral it's rough this place is a giant klingon conference center and yeah. so it's okay that it feels like a giant klingon conference center and then we can just dress it up to make it not quite feel as humongous 
Yeah. Um, but when you take a Federation interior and you scale it up to that, it's it's not the same, and I don't think that we could salvage it kind of that way. Got it. Um, okay. It's a nice idea. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we could we could try it. I don't, I don't think it would be terribly successful. Though. Just just for people watching this later and wondering what we could try it means, uh, we could try it would probably be a month of work. So I don't know if we're gonna get the resources. <laughs> yes. to try I'm sorry. It. Yes. I mean, <laughs> I mean, we could we could spend a week to you know, dress up one hallway of, uh, you know, of some hall of some old Federation interior, yeah. but what do we dress it up with? You know, we can put, you know, we can't put desks and things in the middle of a hallway, right? Like there's, yeah. this is the thing about Federation and being so uniform is that there isn't just room to, to, you know, freeform yeah. stuff like that. So yeah, so while this this environment is being rebuilt, I just want to put this out there. Um, this is not going to be, um, uh, like, you know, how Starfleet Academy was kind of, um, you know, we made the new version for Discovery, but we didn't replace the old version. This is going to be replacing uh, Kittimer um, in the old Romulan mission as well. So Correct. while this is technically a year of Klingon update, it's actually a uh, piece of content that Romulan players will see more than Klingons, which I'm pretty excited about. Uh, we're still working on trying to make sure that we bring everything in our game up to the same uh, value that we, we hold. And it's a process. I know uh, Scott could speak more to that, and I think I'm going to have you and Weston on later in the, the year of Klingon to talk about cutscenes. But, you know, we've done a lot of work on bringing the Romulan story cutscenes up to up to par, and some of those are really cool now. Um, but, uh, you know, the work is ongoing. Kind of tease a little bit. Mike. I will tease the idea that you're going to sit with, you know, we are redoing cutscenes from these tutorials. And so the ones that we've seen that are I look mm -hmm. at and go, oh, my gosh, those look really rough. These new ones, you know, Weston's doing his magic, and they're going to look amazing. So. There was one that you that I can't say anything about, but that you guys showed me that I was just like, ah, ah, chef's kiss. That is so Klingon now. <laughs> we, you know, we, and this is something we've talked about. You know, motion capture. We oh. we have a motion capture suit. So yeah. So that, that's that's the, hold on, it. just because Scott cut out a little bit there. Let me let me put that out again. Uh, we have a motion capture suit now. Uh, and it's, it's, uh, b now it's sitting at Cryptic's offices, so it's not getting a lot of use during this, uh, lockdown. Um, but it did get a little bit of use. Um, and there is one cutscene in particular that's coming up, uh, that you'll see soon and know more about soon that was done with the motion capture suit. And my God, it looks good. I I'm actually, I almost don't want to tell them which one it is until they see it to see who, if people pick it out. Yeah. 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 No, don't tell them. Yeah. But I, I might anyway. <laughs> Can you check the chat real quick? What? Can you check the Discord chat real quick? Oh yeah, I can do that. Absolutely. Da 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 da. Uh. Um, I I don't think so. Let's just keep that uh under our hats for now. Which, if I don't edit this video, everyone's going to hear me say, let's keep it under our hats for now, and go, what is he talking about? Keep one under our hats! Oh, God! But, you know, things are things are being kept, and hats, and things. Um, but, yeah. So, uh, so that's super cool. Um, thank you for sharing that with us, Nick. And then, Scott, you brought a bunch of images, too, that are also in a wonderful slideshow here. So, can you talk a little bit about what we're, what we're going to see through these images? Oh. Scott, try again. Try again. You're breaking up again. Nope. Now I can't hear you at all. <laughs> I can hear him, so that's all on you, Mike. I, think. I know. Yeah. I'm sure it is, but I'm recording on my computer, so. Oh, it, fair it, enough. <laughs> yeah. right, right. I can hear you now, so try again. Oh my god. And then as soon as I told you to try again, you cut out. <laughs> I'm gonna uh, close this out because maybe this is just. Maybe my splash top is just. Oh yeah, having things. splash top will 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 cause problems. Uh, I can hear you perfectly okay. now. So tell tell me a little bit about all this stuff. We have, you'll see some new and some old stuff, um, and as soon as oh, I'm closing this up, all right, so you have an old brig right there. That's that's the brig, the old brig, and then we'll come back. This is the new hallways because this is all Nick's. Uh, um, kit that he made. You've got these like wall panels. Oh, this I is know the this old hallway, hallway very well from every mission that has a Klingon ship in it. <laughs> Scale down a little bit to kind of bring the ceilings down. This is the new brig area. We have, again, 
he's got this floor pieces with all this intricate floor work that he built in that allows us to do some like here we have the old one with just kind of Mike, great any control over the over the slideshow can we I, pause I, it on things or? there's for some reason there's supposed to be an option to add hotkeys uh to pause oh, okay. this thing and there is not for some reason okay. i don't know what obs right. is doing to me right. sorry no worries okay. so so we have the old brig a bridge, and then we had the new bridge before. There's just so much with the lighting. I don't lighting. know why these are wildly out of order, Scott. I'm sorry. How did you label them? I just labeled them new and old. So oh, okay. bridge, new, bridge, old. So okay, so maybe. Uh, oh, so maybe old. Old. Oh, yeah, yeah. There you go. So uh, dang it, I just I, anyway. Um, so as you can see from the, uh, the the shots, you you can obviously tell this is the new stuff here. Uh, great lighting, very very intentional. Very, um, we want to highlight here. This feels like it's just kind of a we're throwing some lights around where, uh, the new one we has very like we we've placed those lights with very, in, very intentional lights to uh, attract players to certain areas and and make uh, show off those specific areas. Um, and again, to really kind of put the light on the ground and show off the ground area and let the light, the, the upper area, kind of sink into the uh. Ooh, into the, the bridge, uh, it's so pretty. The environment, yeah, that bridge is just oh gorgeous. Oh my god, yeah. um, we're still not, I'm still not even done with that there, yeah. but that's uh, so um, quick, compared quick, to the old one, which is just this big brown wall yeah. thing. The old Klingon where, lighting was all very yellow, which is uh, you know I always thought was a little weird because Klingons are black and red, that's their colors, and so now this is well, this feels a little bit more like what I would see on Martok's ship or whatever in the past. When, when we were going back through all of the 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 canon screenshots that Donnie had collected, um, one of the things that that kind of surprised, I think it surprised everybody, was how varied the lighting was even within Klingon yeah. interiors. So red is not predominant. There are a couple of places that that red is very, uh, you know, very front and center. And I think one of the reasons that everybody remembers or thinks of red is really TNG brought red in more than anything else. Yeah. Um, but there's a lot of, like, a lot of just kind of warm... Uh, you know, not orange, not yellow, but just kind of a warm color. There's a lot of really weird random colors you wouldn't think, like blue and green pop in once in a while. Yeah. Uh, and they're not even really lights that are lighting the, the your, where you're sitting. Yeah. It's not throwing a light against the wall. Yeah. yeah. So, so the, a lot of... if you look at all the, the Great Hall, it's a big white, almost a white light that's coming down and lighting the main area. And then I'm going to throw a red light that splashed against the wall to kind of add as an accent color. Yeah. But yeah, it was very interesting when Nick was pointing that out that, gosh, there's a lot of white. <laughs> yeah, it's... um. Uh... I think because they always design Klingon stuff to have a lot of shadow in it to sort of make it the opposite of the extremely well lit and flat lit Federation. Um, and so it's, you know, it's always a lot of like, well, this character is sitting half in light, half in shadow with a big splotch of something ominous looking behind him. And, uh, mm -hmm. which doesn't and here's, itself... where it got, here's where it got complicated was because in the shows, you you see that white light, but you don't usually see the light source, correct, Nick? You just see it's its studio lighting. Yeah, I mean, th th this is the case with with all movies and TV, right? They they just light however they needed to, to light the scene. You never see and the some. Yeah, some lights are motivated and some lights aren't, but usually the the lights that are on the characters aren't motivated. They're just whatever they felt like. Yeah, you know, was necessary. And we have right. to motivate everything. We have to make sure that it at least feels like it's coming from some emitter or someplace, right? It can't just look like it's you know, existing out of nowhere. Yeah, the most uh, the most famous one of those totally unmotivated character lights, of course, being um, the eye light on the captains uh, in the original series that was then replicated yeah. for uh, uh, the first J.J. Trek movie, uh, which I always love yeah. as, a, as a little lighting hit. But yeah, wh where is that light coming from? Why is it there? <laughs> <laughs> That's film noir for you, man. That's beautiful. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, Scott, the approach um, then as we're approaching this stuff, again, same with Kinemer, was, you know, keep kind of the same footprint, but uh, build, bring the, uh, the visual fidelity up to, you know, modern standards for gaming. Uh, can you talk a little bit about what kind of approach and techniques you guys used to update this stuff? So back in the day, we did this thing called where you would bake a, uh, a texture. You do a uh, high res model, and then you would bake normals and all this stuff to kind of do a faux version of lighting on a piece of geo, 
where now, because our computers are a little more robust, you can actually model that stuff. And so that's what Nick was doing, was doing a lot of... Yeah, um, if we get another one of those shots with the hallways with the floors, you'll, you can see the panel lines. Uh, yeah, I can't see it great there. Um, the panel lines and the floors are all cut in. There isn't, there isn't, there isn't like a big normal map. Like this one, um, um, all that ridging in the uh, center... A normal it's map a, is an FX thing that tells you where the divots and stuff and a texture are. Yeah, it's a way to fake geometry, but but like all the panel lines and stuff on the floor here are are actually geometry right now. Right. Um, and we're we're certainly baking in places, uh, you know, for very specific places, but um, but we're trying to use geo where we can. Right, and then that because you're doing you're using that you can use what's called tiling textures, which means you can get. Now we're going to get really into the weeds here. It's called texel density, but it, it allows for everything to look really high res when you're just throwing a tiling texture on there. And so um, when you look at older stuff, you'll see like, gosh, I can see the pixels in the texture that's being splotted against this this piece of geo right. because of the texel density. Where now we don't really have to worry about that because we can just tile it and let the geometry define the shape. And that helps a lot. And that's what Nick was doing a ton of with all this new stuff. And so I'm a big stickler for, I want to be able to see that ro that specular rollover on that, that lip of that table, because you'll see it in, in real life. You'll see the, the, the light hits the corner of a table and you'll see that little hot spot along the edge. I want to see that stuff. And so he's taking care of all that with the modeling and, and you'll see it as you're walking around. And yeah, there's some really cool um, assets that he made that are real simple, but because he, he did a medium res modeling on there, they look really nice. And I just really appreciate what he put into the, the new stuff. That's awesome. That's really, really cool. Um, so uh, without spoiling anything that we can't talk about today, what do you think is the <laughs> most exciting year of Klingon thing you guys have worked on so far? I mean, the only thing I've worked on is Kittimer. <laughs> <laughs> so it's Kittimer. Kittimer. Great. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I, I mean, rebuilding Kittimer has been great. It's it's not as big of a project as DS9 was, but it's it's getting close. I mean, it's been a couple yeah. months now. Where's, where's the rank uh, yeah. on rebuilds yeah. for you, Nick? Is it is it DS9, ESD, Kittimer? Is there a... <laughs> yeah, that's probably about right. That's probably about right. Yeah. How many rebuilds New have Ramos you done now? Well, New Ramos wasn't rebuilt, I guess, but yeah. Um, I mean, that's those are the three big ones so far. Yeah. Um, you know, well, we've certainly rebuilt missions and things, but that's, yeah. those are the three big. You know, and I think I, talk I about. talked about DS9 all the time, just because it's of so how cool. It's just I'm celebrating five years this month, and uh, and I will add this: we're celebrating Nick's fifteenth year. That's right! That's congratulations. Studio. congratulations. So, yeah. So I start. I had five, okay. at least fifteen. So the, the um, hat Nick is wearing when I is the oldest of hats. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when uh, when I first started, he was doing that DS9. That was his first. Like I'm going to redo the DS9, and he was doing white box versions of it. Mm. I'm like, okay. And then that just went away for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> and then and then we were like, okay, let's do it for real now. We're doing it for this X X4 stuff. And then it was just, it was really a, a, um, a labor of love for him. And I was trying to tell him, I remember he wanted to do ops. And I was like, we can't, we don't have time to do ops. And he's like, I'm doing ops because I don't want to have a mission where you go into the old ops and then you go into the new you know, promenade area. And I said, well, you can't, I can't have you do that. If you're going to do it, you're going to do it on your time. And he did. <laughs> he would come in on the weekends, he would stay late, and he would work on that thing. And it looked so good, and I was just so, I mean, I hate doing that, because I don't like seeing him work crazy hours for that, Well, because he really wanted to do it, and he did such a great job, and I know the fans really appreciate yeah. that stuff, so. Well, we had a, you know, they, one they, of those, the camera has not required me to stay, stay that's up. Good. Yeah, so. yeah. I was going to say, it's one of those things where you as a boss were doing the right thing and taking care of your your subordinate and telling him not to overwork himself. Uh, and then he chose to go overwork himself anyway. <laughs> I know where he's coming from because I am like, you know, my whole big thing is do your due diligence and, you know, make sure you do it right uh, no matter what. And I know in my heart, if I was working on something and I had to leave, and I'm doing it all the time with this, the Klingon stuff where I'm like, I don't want to leave this the way it is. 
I want to fix it. I want to make it better. And, and I would do what I could to, to finish it. But Klingon map is just, that is a very daunting task to get all that yeah. stuff up res. So uh, Mike, we're not. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. I didn't no, say, we're not, we, we can't touch everything, but we're doing as best we can. So I know where uh, Nick's coming from, where it's like, I can't let this sit there like this. I yeah. have to spend the time to fix it. And he did it. So, yeah, the, um, uh, that's part of the reason why it's a year of Klingon. You know, the storyline is going to take a part of a year to do, but also all of these updates that we want to do, it's just, it's just going to take the time to do it. Um, now we're working remotely where everybody's working from home. It, it, it does make it a little tougher to kind of get things where we want. Where normally I would just turn around and, Hey Nick, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Now it's like, I got to call them up on teams and make sure that things aren't, are, are, are correct or whatnot and you know things always it's harder through through chat to kind of make sure that everybody understands what's happening so yeah. it's like 50 percent longer to do yeah right especially to through you know working remotely on our computers uh you know i had a, right. I, I was making a gift for social media and it took me like three hours the other day <laughs> um uh yeah there was something else I was going to say, but I forgot it. Um, so uh, thank you guys very much for joining us for this uh, recording today. We'll have this up on YouTube later today, so people will see it then, and uh, you can look at that. Also, uh, congratulations to Nick on designing the summer ship. Uh, well done on that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Uh, you know, 36% of the vote, so congratulations. That's awesome. I, of course, had the lowest number of votes on my design uh, <laughs> um but uh I'm sorry oh no it's fine it's you know i stepped in at the last second because somebody else couldn't have made couldn't make it i wasn't even gonna do it at first so i'm just happy i got to draw something and have hector uh concept it that's a joy in itself um but yeah so we're uh we're gonna wrap up for today but um we'll uh i think we're gonna end all of our year of clay on streams the same way which is uh let's do a nice but not headphone breaking kapla on three are you ready don't forget to hit your push to talk nick uh one yep. two three kapla <laughs>